and we're still just rocking out. Don't mind Justin; he can't tell, he can't hear us, anyways. But hello, everyone, and welcome to the first Embroidery Nerd Needle Bar of 2023. Uh, we've had a nice little break. Justin got to teach his class at the Long Beach show. Um, I was able to go out there and join him for that. Well, I got to supervise. I got to sit in the back and, well, not heckle. He told me not to heckle. It was a rule. Um, but uh, we've got that. We have some other exciting things that have been happening as well. But let me go ahead and introduce ourselves. We have Matthew Enderly from Patch Phrase. I'm Jeff Fuller from Fuller and Brewery Works. And we have Justin Armenta from JA Digitizing Studios, um, who seems to be frozen. No, he yep. is. <laughs> he would make a very good frozen person at the moment. But um we're really excited to be back already and to kind of get back into the swing of things today our discussion will be on density and i do believe that we're planning on showing how do you how do you set density in three different softwares um but first up matt has uh the new hmm, would you call it new thread converter revamp thread converter it's just an update to it yeah this is the the segment that we call uh justin's frozen help what do we do let's sidetrack a little bit um and we're also just saying hello to everyone that's coming in and uh talking to us in the comments which we'll hit up shortly but uh uh just to uh, go over this okay jeff i will click the button to bring it up oh, i mean it is your forward. monitor um, but yeah, if you go to threadcharts.com, it's one of the free tools that we developed where uh, basically if you have, um, yeah, I'm going to show my debit card as an example, this floppy drive. Um, that was Let's look different. at Matt's debit card and the back yeah, right? three digits are. <laughs> uh, 113. Uh, so this floppy, say I wanted to know what this red color is. If I had a picture of it, I could upload it into threadconverter.com. And then I could pick exactly um, what I want. You know, let me just go to Google. And we're just going to type in floppy. That was very dangerous to type in. But uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to copy the image link. But, but why do we have the save icon? Yeah. Oh, I brought one of these into work. And one of my students was like, Oh, I didn't realize they were actually floppy. <laughs> like, seriously? Um, let's see. Okay, cool. So that didn't work, but we'll just upload it now. Yep. Um, and I'll just do this one. Oh, oh, of course, then it came in. Whatever. All right, so now I got my image in. And then I want to know what brand to get. Um, so this was kind of one of the latest things is I added, I think like 21,000 threads, uh, last week into it. So you can go through, you can find exactly which one you want. So if I just go ahead and pick Madeira, cause that's pretty much everyone's favorite. Um, and then you're going with poly neon 40, select the color and there you go. So it tells you what your colors are. Um, or it's going, these are all your different colors that they carry. And then the percentage is how accurate it is. So if you're looking for that one, this is your best bet. Um, and it shows you different, the further down you go, the more into the, the rabbit hole you go. Like this one, it's obviously not close, but that's just the way it works. So, uh, there's that, uh, the convert from thread, same thing. Um, oh, another feature I added, uh, you can just type in exactly what you're looking for. Um, so like, there you go. I can click it. Same here. Um, but I'm going to pick Polly because uh, 1776. Aha, Independence Blue. And then say I'm going with Gunnel because that's what I can get in a store locally if that's your example. Oh, not Poly Flash, Poly 40. And Deep Jade. So that's how you can do that. And if you're looking for digitizing, you got the menu over here. You click on digitizing, and it has some of our fabulous digitizers that are in the group. And uh, you can click the link to get directly to their spot. Um, how to know that you're on the latest version. If you're in the Discord, you'll see that there is a section where I post the latest app version. Down here, it tells you what it is, the date I updated it. 
that's pretty much it. And I think that's really all the changes. Um, there's a lot of like under the hood processing changes, but that's all super nerdy stuff. We're all nerds here, but that's super, super nerdy. Um, so we're not going to talk about that's that. That's too nerdy. And Jeff's favorite feature probably is dark mode. Yep. 10 out of 10 recommend dark mode. And 10 out that's of 10 rec recommend is, this overall. Right. At, it's absolutely. Awesome. It's a great tool. It's an awesome tool. And if you have features you want or threads that aren't in there, which is pretty unlikely, um, you can head on over to the Discord channel, which is, there's a link for it. And it is going to be the Thread Converter app. And you can just go through here and you can see I added in the colors to make it look pretty. So some little things. Ha, huh, I found it. Oh, too late. <laughs> I was like, it's got to be one in here. Um, but you can go to embnerd.com forward slash discord and that'll uh, get you into our discord server. So if you guys want to join, that's uh, we chat a lot over there. Um, not going to lie. I pretty much have given up on Facebook Messenger, and I just go to Discord now. Um, just Facebook Messenger, not Facebook. But. Right. Just, yeah. Totally didn't give up on Facebook yet. No, but yeah. we'll go with some of the comments here. We have Kingsbury Craft, hello. Um, we have Cindy King. Hello, Cindy. She actually, um, so when we did AG, we did a patch that you had to go find all the Nerd Star patch pieces, and Cindy actually got to take those home with her, and they are at her... Uh, sewing shop and Matt just the other day sent me a picture of them um, that he found from way back when when we were talking. So there you go. And is Matt going to share it? Don, don, don. Maybe. We'll see. Um, there you go. So that was one of the funner things that we did at AG and Cindy was able to win it and go home with not only that, but with the Nerd Star as well. Um, there we go. Apparently, we're having technical difficulties. I mean, that was earlier. We have TMG Custom Design. Hello. Um, we have Mike Muldowney. I'm going to be driving. Welcome back, boys. Good to see you, Mike. Uh, good to see you as well, Ramona. And let me get here. We have Jesse Gibson checking in. Hello. We have Nick. This is hello, everyone. I wish you would have heckled him, um, but it was a great seminar on 3D Puff on Hats. I told him that you, you told me I wasn't allowed to heckle you during your class at, at, at Long Beach, but it was a great class. It was a, it was definitely a workshop. Um, and the workshops take a, uh, they're like three hours. I know it was a marathon teaching. <laughs> I'm sure standing up there for three hours. Uh, don't let me forget. I have pictures from that, that I need to send over to you. Um, cause I looked okay. at my phone the other day and was like, Oh, I need to send him pictures. So let's go. It was three hours. But it, it flew by. It did. It yeah. did. Um, Cindy says, I love my star. <laughs> we have Corey Pengraff checking in, who has a YouTube channel of his own. Um, I've, oh, now I feel bad that I don't know his YouTube channel offhand. Corey, post a link to your YouTube channel <laughs> down below so that if people are looking for it, they can catch you there. Um, we have Amy, hello. Looking forward to all the great info. Um, uh, Renee Rosales from Texmac, the Happy Japan uh, embroidery machine distributors in the United States checking in saying nice work on thread converter mat. And we have time passes quickly. Yes, it does. Cindy and Laura, not going to butcher your last name. Sorry. I'm just not going to butcher it, but I use the thread converter often. Thanks. Um, I use it all the time too. It's a really, really great tool. So, um, today we are going to be talking about density and I am going to go ahead and let Justin take it, jump into it first. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> I totally didn't put you on the spot. I think there's a, is there a little bit of delay. Just a little bit of a lag, yeah. Okay. All right. A little bit of technical difficulties today. Um, I didn't catch the beginning, so I don't know if you guys covered this, but I'm just going to kind of lead into uh, a little new structure that we're going to try here. And uh, we're going to start covering a lot of topics and since we're expanding our, our knowledge and our software that we're using, we're going to try to, you know, we try to do as much of a, a universal approach and, and more on theory, uh, just so it covers 
the the knowledge behind what we're talking about, not software specific. But since we're we're kind of growing that that family of software that we are getting uh, more proficient in and that we actually have a chance to use, uh, we are going to approach it a little bit differently. Um, where we are going to cover things specific to software, and we're going to show you, we're going to talk about certain things and certain techniques and certain settings and whatnot that you use for embroidery and digitizing. And we're going to kind of show you how to use it in specific softwares and just to show you how how different uh, certain softwares approach it or or label it, call it, and certain aspects of the softwares, just so you can kind of see an array uh, of, of different techniques and whatnot. So. I like it. But if you're all Justin's idea. What's that? This was all your fabulous idea and it was much better than what what everyone else was pitching, which was nothing. Just <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I'll go ahead and uh and pull up my screen here. So just give me just a moment. And then the thought was that I'll run something on my machine while we're doing this. And then uh, we can show it too. So um, we'll get to see a live stitch out. So um, the topic uh, that we are going to see in the, the the different software here is going to be uh, density. So what is density? It's it's basically the measurement of the space between the stitches, depending on if it's a fill stitch or a satin stitch. So it's 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 mainly used in in reference to the coverage of thread uh, in your embroidery. So typically when, when you're speaking of density, you are speaking of, of fills and satin stitches. Um, have a problem we're gonna have the garment uh too much density you could start the garments and get parting what if you have too much too much density you're basically adding too much stitches to your design um so it is that balance that you're looking for as far as the right amount of coverage um for the for the design without going overboard not doing too much where you're going to start seeing that garment showing through uh, and or you know under stitches of traveling stitches and whatnot if you start seeing those going through so specifically to Wilcom here um this is just a, a generic square fill and Wilcom uses these these pop-up windows or these are these docks what do they call them here dockers they're dockers right? um and typically these are the these are the last these are the three that i yeah these are the three that i have up um at all times in my digitizing window um this one here is the object properties and this is where you're going to be actually changing uh, all the settings of your of your digitized objects and uh this is those density settings so once you select the object, whether you just uh, drag and drop a box around it to select it, or you can just click on the object itself. Uh, under fills, you're gonna see what type of stitch it is, and which have that object selected. And the stitch spacing is actually gonna be your density. So the stitch spacing is, is it doesn't, it's not called density in Wilcom, it's stitch spacing. There are some other values that go along with it as far as the stitch length. Stitch length is going to be the distance between each needle penetration. Um, sometimes you, you can balance the stitch spacing with the stitch length together uh, when you are looking for a softer feel. You're really going to get the coverage of the thread uh, to make sure that you have that full coverage look to it. Uh, the stitch length is going to be something that you do with, like I said, depending on the, the garment type, the material, sometimes you can go a little bit longer in a stitch length to make sure that it doesn't have that really bulletproof feel to it. <clears throat> um, 
but uh, yeah, the, the stitch densities, it's, it is in millimeters in WorldCom. Uh, average densities, again, depending on or what you're working with, uh, but on average, you're going to be on fill stitches, you are going to be using somewhere in the 0.35 to 0.4 range, depending on the garment you're working with. Um, and that's that's pretty much basically it as far as density and how you change the density in Wilcom. Uh, this one here is an example. Uh, again, just selecting that satin stitch. It's going to tell what it is the, of the element that you've that you've selected here. It's saying satin, and again, stitch values. The spacing is the density in in uh, Wilcom. There are some auto spacing settings in Wilcom that get quite in depth. Uh, if you know what you're doing and you know what you're looking for as far as different auto spacings. Um, depending on how, what size the satin's going to be in different aspects of the satin. Uh, there's a lot to that. You really know what you need to know what you're doing as far as what, what settings in your auto spacing to use something like that. I prefer, uh, which probably cause I, I, you know, I, my background is in another software. Uh, so value of the density is what I work to get comfortable in and I know what situations is certain fabrics um, but the the density values are in satins and, and fill stitches in Wilcom um, as you can see the it's both millimeters averages like Again, our 0 0.35, 0 0.4, somewhere in there, depending on what you're working with. Uh, the only difference is, is the density can be affected by the stitch length and the fills that you use in Wilcom. So, of course, density in Wilcom and how you adjust them, and then how you apply them to your digitizing project uh, when you're working with a design. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass this off to one of uh, Jeff or Matt next here. Um, I'll take over from Hatch, just real quick. We don't have any comments that we want to bring up. No, definitely not bringing Mark up, who's clapping. <laughs> that looks like it's, uh, he's making a heart. Um, all right. And then what we are going to do is I brought Hatch up. Um, so we are going to click this button. Um, so yeah, we just saw Justin had a quick, simple thing up in uh, Wilcom. I'm just going to go ahead and make a, a square, and I'm going to stitch this out too. So um, one thing to know about your densities too is if you have a bigger area and it's really dense, you're going to get a lot of distortion. Our lovely Jeff below me, um, he actually made an article on our website, which now my hatch is currently auto-saving, so it just locked up. Um, here we go. So this is kind of what I'm gonna demonstrate real quick is when you want to get that perfect circle and you embroider it and it does not come out like a circle, it looks like an oval. Um, so notice how in Jeff's diagram he has here, you need to digitize that oval to get that circle. So what exactly does that look like? I'm gonna show you exactly um, I'm gonna do it wrong and you'll see exactly why. Um, so I'm going to actually, instead of doing a square, we're gonna do a circle because that's gonna be the, the easiest. Um, and that's a lot of stitches, so we're not gonna do it that big. Um, Gauging from 30 minutes so out to 15 minutes so out to five minutes so out. Let's see, one and a half, that should do it. So Matt, I have a question. Yeah. Um, where do you see your number of stitches in Hatch? Um, okay, so uh, it is down here in the bottom right, your current stitch, that's your current stitch count. Um, and that's pretty much it. You can obviously do like uh, print preview. We'll see what printer it thinks it's gonna try to print to. Um, page. Labels. Yeah, it's going to my label printer because that's the last thing I printed with on my computer. 
Uh, and you can see it here as well. I got my color, which is apparently Isochord, even though that's like I own one color of Isochord, but um, either way. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention that I thought of before, one really nice thing about uh, Hatch is the thing that um, Justin was talking about, your stitch length and your density. If you're using Hatch and you forget, when you go down here, you'll notice how on the right side, when you hover over your spacing, you'll see that it it shows the dis the dimension line between the first and the third row because you're not doing the, the first return, you're coming back and then the next one. So it's you're measuring the length or, um, or the distance between two of the same directions in parallel. So that's kind of the big thing because if you measure directly one way to the next one, you're only getting half your dimension. And then your stitch length is between your penetrations. So um, right now I'm looking at uh, in inches or imperial. Uh, so if I switch to metric for our Canadian friends, um, I'm going to be doing a 38.1 millimeter circle. Um, and then stitch um, density is currently 0.4. Um, I'm going to bump that up to 0.36. And I think it's really cool to show here while you're editing that, Matt, is if you look at the little diagram to the right of the box that he's editing when he edits it. So if you go back to where you put 0.36 in and you click in that box, you can see just to the right of it. It's actually showing you where it's measuring. That's what I just said, Jeff. I know, and I've reiterated. <laughs> but, yeah, so um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and turn the underlay off just so you can see. Um, and then Phil, I'm going to put that back to 0.4. So you can see it's it's changing a little bit. Um, it doesn't look like a whole lot on screen, but when you actually sew it out, that's going to be uh, a pretty different, uh, pretty drastic difference. Because right now at 0.4, I'm looking, I just removed underlay, so that's why it's lighter. I'm looking at about 1,600 stitches. Now, if I do 0.36, I just added about 200. So by making it more dense, I'm adding more stitches, and then it's going to make it expand and kind of just balloon out. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm intentionally doing this bad so that I can, like, over-demonstrate what it is actually doing. Because there's no, like, set formula. If you want a circle that's three inches, you need to make it, like, 3.1 versus 2.9 tall or something like that. It, it doesn't work like that. You have to know um, just basically how your stitch uh, distortion is going to happen, which is where this um, pictorial that Jeff did explains it. Because in the satin stitch, the the open end, it's going to push that way, but then the, the left and right, it's going to pull it in. Because if you think about it, you're taking thread from one end and you're tying it this way. So, and that's I, happening throughout a regular fill too. I always talk about it like you're tying your shoelace. Because yeah, when you I, pull in on your laces, it draws in on those sides and it goes out the end. And you can really feel it um, there. All right. So I just added my underlay back in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on 3D view just so you can see this a little bit more without the whole like uh, screen weirdness. All right, so this is going to be a one and a half inch circle on the screen. This looks perfect, um, but I'm going to follow it up uh, just by duplicating it, and I'm going to do an outline, just a single run outline. And so it's going to do the fill, and then it's going to put that same one and a half inch circle on the exact same spot. And what we're going to see is that in this part here, there's going to be a gap. And in this part here, it's going to be sticking out because that's what that diagram shows. And this is one of the frustrations of digitizing, but I'm going to go ahead, pop off of hatch and then throw this on the Tajima and get that going. And now it's Jeff's turn in pulse. In software roulette let's see who pulls up next so i will go ahead and share my screen here and oh i have to share entire screen there we go screen two away we go add to stream 
There's like five buttons, I promise. All right, so here we have it in uh, Pulse. This is Pulse DG16. It was good that I remembered that because I almost didn't. And if I'm going to use hotkeys, I got to make sure that I do it in the software and not in the stream chart window because, well, my screen just disappeared for you guys. But this is uh, DG16. And in this, they actually, when you're looking at the densities and you select an object, so we'll go ahead and select that one there, it actually calls it a density. So here in my stitch settings, I have um, 0.4 millimeters um and with some it goes you know some software it measures it in stitch spacing some is it's in points some it's in uh actual measurement of millimeters points is actually a measurement of a fraction of a millimeter so if this was uh a different software it'd be point or it would be four points and that would be a point four density but here right here where i have it highlighted that is the density of the fill um and to change it, I mean, it's as simple as selecting the objects there and then typing in your new value um, to get what you're going for. Now, when you are when you start getting into density, the rule of thumb, and, and to me, this is kind of the, the theory of the whole thing, is you want to, look, to use the least amount of stitches to get the coverage you're looking for. Um, with a lower number of stitches, you're going to get less needle penetration, so it's going to be softer on the garment. You're going to get less distortion with the less with a less amount of stitches, and it's going to be a little bit more comfortable and a lot more pliable. Um, I, I don't know if everybody has yet to experience this phenomenon, but when you pick up a shirt and it feels like the left chest logo is a piece of cardboard, they used a lot of density because <laughs> they put a lot of stitches in there and it now doesn't flow with the garment. And that's kind of the main goal is that you want to flow with your garment. So um, that is how I set my density there. Uh, I've got this little red triangle. Um, that would be my stop point, And I should not have put it in the corner, but that is a future death problem. Maybe, yep. So right now I have my start point, which is going to be a green circle. And my stop point there, which is going to be a rectangle. Um, and I've set my density over here to 0.35. Generally, I can honestly say I run anywhere between a point, uh, a point 0.35 and a point 0.45. Um, somewhere in there, depending on if I'm putting a light color on a light garment or, a, you know, I'm going to have a more open, open density. If I'm doing a dark or a light color on a dark garment, I'm obviously going to have to have more density or more underlay. Um, you can use underlay in substitution of more density to help get you some of that coverage too, because you're able to lift the stitches off and kind of hide that uh, object. So here I have a complex fill. Here I have a satin. And again, it's simple. It's just as simple as coming in here and editing to that value. Um, with Satins, of course, you know, one of the one of the most interesting things that I ran into when I started, um, especially when I started digitizing for hats, is, is if you use a density on a shirt um, that you would normally use, or you use a density on a hat, you would use, let's say, on a shirt, it's going to look pretty thin. You actually have to bump up your densities on a hat, and I'm not sure if it's the curvature of the hat or just the physical makeup of how it's sewing, but it'll always look a little bit thinner on a hat. So your density needs to go up, depending on the type of garment. That you're on. Um, we'll go ahead and turn off the Atari sounds. <laughs> Justin smirked. That's how I know his camera's working, because I got him to smirk. Um, so again, if this, you know, going off of our points, if this was actually an object that I was trying to digitize and I wanted it to be a square, I'm not going to end up, I'm not going to end up with a square here. Uh, I'm going to end up with, this is roughly, if I had to guess, I'd say about a 15 to 20% stitch angle. Um, I would end up with a parallelogram. Is that what they call it? Rhombus. Rhombus. It's par <laughs> yeah. I would, I would end up with something distorted. Um, and there's ways to mitigate that distortion with a little bit of pull comp. Most of the time, at least when I digitize, 
and I, I've seen Justin's digitized files is after you do it long enough, you start to manually compensate for your objects. So when you look at this, if I was going to try to do a square, I would actually digitize it in a rhombus so that I would get a, uh, get a square and then add my settings on top of that. So I'm going to grab just a couple of comments here um, because there were some questions. So Ramona actually once said, do you adjust your circle for that angle? Uh, we'll get Matt when he's back on that one. Um, Nick says, I have, or we have Melco Design Shop, and the densities are not, are start at four, not point four. So I move the, I, I assume they just move the decimal point. So a, a 3.5 in Design Shop would be a 0.35 in your software. Um, I know we weren't planning on it. <laughs> but I can pull up Design Shop and we can take a look at it in there. Um, and Nick also says that he also started playing with Chroma Lux. There we go. And we'll just create a new project file. Today is not the day that I was planning on showing this. That is for sure. So, uh, Jeff, is do I have a lag now? Or am I no, good? you think you're good. Okay. Uh, well, Jeff's finding those points out um a lot of times too when, when you're when you're dealing with density uh the amount of push and pull that you're going to get does have effect uh the density does have effect on the compensation that you do if you're doing something in a really light fill uh such as you know the background of a patch or if you're doing shading or something like that uh it's not going to push as much as a full density fill is going to have that's you know at 0.36 say um the more the dense that you have and more thread sitting next to each other, the, the reason why it's pushing out is that as, as that thread lays next to each other, it's going to start pushing towards the openings of that, of that fill or that satin. So less dense, less push. There you go. All right. So I'm going to pull up real quick here. I'm going to pull up my software and um, because I have it and it's available. So I pulled up design shop and as you can see, it does say 3.8 points. So that would be a 0.38 millimeter measurement where you also have your stitch length here as a 40 point. So that would be a 4.0 millimeter. Um, there it is. And <laughs> that's how it's set in there. So they actually use the point system. So it is, you just move the decimal point um one to the left uh based off of how they call it so apparently i'm running more stitches that's fine i'll close that no i don't want to save close that and go ahead and bring that down um so that's how uh design shop does it too you guys got a bonus design shop <laughs> all right so um and then you also started playing chroma with chroma lux and oh i don't have that one open i had it open earlier today um ah, there we go uh cindy says then is there issues with white thread on a black uh item being thin looking um i think justin i'm going to defer to your judgment on this one yeah you definitely get uh the the fabric the the garment and the, the color of thread is going to definitely affect densities um if i know a, a design is going to be white thread on a black garment say white thread on a black hat i am going to use more density in that fill to make sure that there's more coverage because of that stark contrast between black and white with the thread and the garment that of course that darker garment's going to want to show through more on that density so <clears throat> like jeff mentioned earlier you can you can help by using uh some more underlay as well but density is going to definitely be the factor as far as trying to get that full coverage uh density the the term density is also used in things like underlay you know if jeff and i were talking about something and then maybe there's a, a digitizing 911 design that we're working on and we're trying to figure out what a problem is we may say like how dense is the underlay and because when you get into underlay settings as well when you're working with an object the actual density of underlay as you can see the 
the stitches that are that are uh, pretty spaced out there are representing the underlay stitches that Jeff has pulled up. The density of the underlay, of course, is going to be a lot less dense than what the top stitches are. But when you when you're referencing the word density and the term density, it could be referring to the to the underlay as well. So, as an example here, we have our top stitching is running. I just used my hand to point at my screen. So I'll use my mouse this time. Our top stitching is running in this direction here, and our underlay is actually coming in at this direction here. And when I went ahead and I set the underlay, I do have a value here that I have my stitch length and I have my density. So I can change that to a three millimeter density, which is going to open up the spacing in the underlay itself. Um, or I can actually drop that down to, to a smaller um, smaller density where the measurement's gonna be closer together. Um, one of the things that I've noticed in, in my testing is that your density of your underlay and your stitch length of your upper thread, uh, they work in concert with each other. Um, the idea is, is that for every needle penetration, if we get one right here, that it's gonna cover two layers or rungs of the underlay to help hold it up. So that's one of the things that I've noticed a lot of the manufacturers, they default these things to stuff that's going to work well, um, but it's not necessarily the stuff that I use. So I actually at this, you know, I've got my lattice density at a two. And if I look at my upper fill here, I've got it at a 0.35. Um, what I really tend to look at is, and I'm sure I just went right past it is my stitch length, my overall stitch length. So generally it defaults at like a 0.4 or no, a four millimeter stitch length. And I like to go down to um, like a three and a half because the longer the stitch you have, the more that it's gonna pull in. Um, so I tend to try to go with a little bit shorter of a stitch length in my fill. And of course you put the camera on me and you say, find that, <laughs> find that value. And I freeze up a little bit. So. Um, but that is your, your underlay density. And that is something that you can increase, uh, if you're having problems with coverage, um, without mm -hmm. increasing your upper density, you can increase your, um, your underlay as well. So, um, I'm not going to read every comment because I was told not to read every comment. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so white, the a comment says, uh, white thread is technically thinner. I think, uh, correct it doesn't have any dyes in it so the density of a white should be slightly more dense to get some of the same coverage as black um i personally think that the the difference of thickness in thread uh between white and black is so minimal that you're gonna end up using the same densities regardless um i think it matters more what you're putting it on and how much of it's going to show through versus um, whether or not you're trying to cover a light with a dark or dark with a light. Um, that's That's been my experience. And I mean, I've measured the thickness of thread and the measure, I mean, it's really minimal, um, less than the thickness of a piece of hair um, between the, those two colors. So next question. <laughs> I can see my mouse moving on. The stream yard screen and i'm trying to go okay um so without running the stitch count too high which is better increase underlay or top density that's going to depend on your garment um if it's there, a, there's always a, a depends yeah. um the the way i kind of approach it is there's certain underlays that i'm going to use for certain garments i i kind of build my foundation there um and then from there it's what is it going on? What color garments are going on? Uh, even angles of the fills can sometimes, if, if you're if you're forced to do kind of a weird angle in a fill just because of the way the, the design is running, there are some times where you have to adjust the density. Um, but I think experimenting with your software and, and getting those 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 underlays where you know they work, you know, you're going to use more underlay on something like a beanie or a towel where there's a lot of uh, pile or nap to the, to the fabric and you want to basically flatten that fabric down. So as, as a, 
knockdown stitch does, it's basically a knockdown stitch is kind of a heavier underlay stitch. Um, so you're going to add more underlay to that where it kind of compresses that material down to make sure that your top fill can, can lay onto a flatter surface and you're not driving up the density so high in order to get that coverage on, on that, that type of porous material. So one of the things that I look at is when you start going up into the, like the point, let's say you, you've hit point 35 and you're still not getting enough coverage. You know, you start going into point three. If you're on a t-shirt, you're going to start ripping holes in it. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's when you start lofting up or increasing the density of your underlay. But I will say that Nick actually has a really good point here. Uh, you can also increase your stitch length to reduce needle penetration. So we'll lay more thread on top with less needle pen penetration playing with that. Mm -hmm. uh, um, with stitch angles helps with coverage too. Um, because the more, the longer your stitch length, the more light you get that reflects off of that thread. Um, and so it'll actually look fuller uh, with a longer stitch length. But then you start running into that where you're going to get a you know if you do too long of a stitch length you're going to start getting a little bit more pull and you have to deal with the uh the distortions caused by that so it really is it it kind of turns into a balancing act but really you know it comes down to experience like ramona says have you tested that 3.5 stitch length compared to a four millimeter and i actually have um uh lee caroselli actually when she teaches her blending she goes down to a uh 3.5 inch stitch length because there's that pull because um, she doesn't typically use underlay. So I have actually tested that and I do get more distortion when I use a longer stitch length, but whether or not that's something that can't be compensated for, it definitely can be compensated for. Um, waiting for Matt's picture to show back up because he was selling something. He'll come back in a second. And there's even, the, the, there's even times where, you know, Kind of going against what you would regularly think on on like thinner dry fit materials there's situations where i found kind of giving a more of a coverage of area of underlay kind of a netting area to really stabilize your your material so you don't have that that shifting of that softer material <clears throat> kind of kind of counterintuitive because you're trying to put the least amount of stitches on a, on a fabric like that but if you kind of build that foundation on on a nice netting of an underlay and you come back over it with uh, less dense fills a little bit longer stitch length fills that you're you're not piling on that top fill those layers of kind of those those less density layers on top of each other are going to lay a lot flatter when you're not really worried about full coverage as far as, you know, on something like a, a piqué shirt or a beanie or something like that. So not only that, it gives you a lot softer hand to the garment. And I think exactly. ultimately that's, that's a big part of it is you want a nice soft hand to it that your embroidery flows well with the garment, but Matt has his camera pulled up and Matt, we're going to put you on solo so that you can see what you're zooming in on. All right, so I'm trying to hold the camera as steady as possible. I was looking for the tripod longer than it took to sew it out. Um, so I don't want to let go of the camera too much because it'll be motion sick. But if you look at exactly the spots, like the top here, see a little bit more white thread. And I'm just going to point to it and then hold the camera steady. Then down here, you can see the red poking out past it. That's kind of what I was talking about. This is a very small shape, but the, the larger you get, but the fill, the more exponential it'll become. But like, I don't know how, um, well, it is focused breathing for sure. You know, let me take it off of auto. And then I can do it manually. Maybe, there we go. Mildly blurry. Oh, here we come. Ooh, right. that's nice and crisp. There you go. So there you can see it. Apologize for the shakiness. I'm trying to freehand this without the tripod that I couldn't find. But there you can see it. It does not look that bad right now. Um, but yeah, again, the more you put it in, um, or more, the larger your shape is, the worse it's going to get. Because uh, then if I go to the right, 
you can see that one there. That one's actually pretty bad. Um, and the other thing you gotta think about too is when you do a shape like this, normally you outline it in a satin order. So that satin stitch is also gonna pull too. The run stitch is not going to. It's gonna put, it's gonna go exactly where you want it, other than the deflection. Okay, I'm gonna move my hand. Um, other than the uh, the penetration in the the fabric. So that's gonna be the first part there. Um, and then this one here, a little shaky. It's like a Parkinson's or something. Um, and that's a satin. Uh, I think it's like a five and a half to six millimeter satin that I did. You can see the, um, it, it's not a whole lot of distortion, um, but it's that's kind of being affected by the weave of the material as well a little bit. Um, but yeah, your outline is gonna be affected. But what you can see perfectly in this one is if you look to the left and the right, you're gonna see that the red peaks out way beyond that black border. Because all I did was I made the satin, duplicated it, turned it into an outline. So there, the outline is supposed to be at the exact boundaries of that red satin, but you can see it goes beyond it. So that's exactly what I did for all of on the file. I obviously added the parts to the right um, after screen. It's like, yeah. And then down here, I did this. This is what you're talking about with different colored material. Um, so a lot of things like I do, all my patches, I typically do them on black because it hides pretty well. But like this is white uh, twill, obviously. This red, I exaggerated it so that you could see it. Um, and you can pretty clearly see it right now that you can see all the white peeking through it that's what you're going to get. So if I did like a black, it would be a little less noticeable just because of the contrast. But that's one of the things you got to worry about. And this is technically a 0.6 density. So it's really open. But uh, again, we're trying to really demonstrate this well and over exaggerating it is the best way to, to help you learn. But that's all I got. I'm going to switch it back to my other lens, get rid of the shaky so matt we have a question of what fabric is that this is our embroidery nerd twill so i guess i could get really close in i love this lens so much um but you can see that the density it or the the weave is pretty tight um so the it doesn't it's not as jagged on the edges as some of the other patch twills but it's what I run all my patches on, and you can get that in or on our website, which Jeff can post the link to while I go ahead and uh, swap my lens out. Oh, please, while I get that link from the website. <laughs> well, we don't have to do it right now. We, we still have other things that we can talk about. It's just I yeah, got to so, turn my camera off because of, I have to spin it onto my tripod on my desk. It's, I don't want to make anyone sit. <laughs> so the overall uh, subject matter as far as densities is, 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 is definitely as far as coverage is what the, the main uh, idea as far as density, the coverage on your the thread on your garment. Uh, there are things you need to uh, think about with the density like Matt was just showing. You're going to have pulling from the sides and pushing to the ends. Um, the amount of density is definitely going to affect that. The size of your of your filled area or your satin is going to affect that. If you are trying to get registration as far as like an outline to line up perfectly and not show thread outside of that outline or pulling in too much from that outline, uh, that's going to be another effect of density. Uh, density on 3D puff designs. Uh, of course, you know 3D puff digitizing uses triple almost sometimes the density of normal densities uh double or triple uh so you're you're putting a lot of strain on that on that thread so as far as push and pull it's going to be even more than regular embroidery uh so these are things that densities all affect the type of garment you have needing extra density on those really thick porous garments beanies towels something like that uh, you're working for with less uh, kind of dainty materials, thinner materials, softer materials. 
and uh, those are going to be using a little bit less densities, a little bit longer stitch lengths that you can play with to get that softer feel. Uh, so overall, those are kind of the the different things that we're touching on as far as density. It kind of leads into a little bit more subject matter that we'll touch a little bit more on as far as push and pull. Um, but you got something else to add there now that your camera's up there, Matt? Yeah. Um, so let me go ahead and turn the exposure down. There we go. Care about picture quality here. So this is top top notch production films. Um, so I just demonstrated the whole pull comp thing. Sometimes you don't really know how to deal with it. What I typically end up doing um, is I just sew it up. And I, so like, I'm going to bring up a patch real quick that I did. This one's in Wilcom. Um, so this uh, circle is going to be like three and a half, I think. That's what 88, yeah. Um, so three and a half, that's what I want my final patch to be. So I would make my, my white fill three and a half on the screen. And then I'm going to see exactly how much it pulls in. So I do the white fill. Um, let's see. Not that one. This one. So this is exactly what I would, I'm would. i looking at is I have this white. It's going to be a little. It's going to actually be right here. And I'm going to stitch it. And then when I stitch it, I'm going to be looking at it and it's going to be like this. So then I'm going to measure that difference with my caliper and I'm going to bring it out beyond that because then I know that it pulls in, for an example, half a millimeter. Then I bring it past half a millimeter and then I know it's going to bring it back to that millimeter or a half millimeter. You just kind of cut the difference there and then same thing here. So you can see that there's a gap because I know I'm going to get about two thread. Uh, in this visual render that are going to be pushed out. So that's kind of how I do it. So if you don't know what the actual formula is, because there isn't one, that's exactly how I learned how to do it. And now I just kind of, you know, just send a design and hope it works. So we all do that. I mean, you get, you get used to digitizing for it. And yeah. so if you're digitizing for the same medium, the same stabilizer, the same thread, you're gonna you're gonna end up knowing what that distortion is gonna be just because you're you're dealing with so many so much and that's why a lot of the people that do the production digitizing they've been doing this for you know the Justin how long have you been doing this twenty billion years twenty twenty eight years yes twenty eight years you know over twenty eight years of digitizing for you know it's pretty much the same garments with the same thread he looks at a garment and goes okay I know how much I need to compensate for that. Yeah. Um, but we'll go ahead and pull up a couple comments here. Uh, Matt, since you do so many of the same recurring shape, do you just save slash store shapes you know so well, or do you punish yourself and do it from scratch every time? Pun intended. You said so, like sewing. Um, uh, yeah, so most of the patches, so like you'll notice actually this one here looks pretty much the same as that one. So the borders, I pretty much use the same. Um, so I'm lucky I can do that. Uh, if you're doing like polos because you're a company or you're doing company polos or something like that, you probably can't do that because everyone has different logos typically. Uh, otherwise, that's trademark infringement. Um, so, yeah, I do try to save them or other ones. I save shapes and stuff like that. But a lot of times it takes me longer to look for the design. Like I know which one it is. It takes longer to find it than just to redo it. Um, Long story but, short, he punishes himself every time. Yeah, it's pretty much that's it. a good yeah exactly ramona says matt your circle test did you copy and paste your circle one in a fill and one in a run stitch that will help everyone to test a note and note the amount of compensation you need right so basically you take your fill and you copy and paste it on top of itself and you turn it into a run stitch so then you can see how much the distortion is going to be yeah it's pretty much what i did so you just do a circle know exactly what you're looking for um, if I do three and a half, oh, and I had my aspect lock off, uh, there that is, but that is a satin. That's not what we want. Um, so I know this is going to shrink this way. It's going to expand that way. Um, control D duplicate, um, hey, different color outline. And that's exactly what I run. And then I can see, but if you do other shapes on top of it, 
Um, so if I bring this one in for my center one and select them, and I just happen to know it's the third Pathfinder, and then I can get rid of that, and then I can see exactly how that works. But um. so one one side note: if you are an embroiderer getting uh, files back from digitizers, whether you pull it up on screen or if you look at the, I always include a PDF of the finished design and you're going to see things like this. Don't assume that, or don't think that the digitizing is off. These are done purposely. Uh, these are compensations that are done on purpose. If it looks perfect on screen and or on the PDF, more than likely you're going to sew it out and you're going to have those issues that, that Matt showed on his, on his sew outs. Um, and if anyone is curious, I think we could probably throw up all the, or I guess the file that I, uh, this file, I can throw up in the Google Drive and you guys can download it and then you can run it on your machines too if you'd like, see how that works and you can compare it with mine. Uh, actually, one other really important thing, my Tajima does not add whole comp to it. Um, because that setting is turned off. If you run the same design on your machine, it might have a software setting in the machine to automatically add 0.2 millimeters to every satin stitch that it detects. Um, so that you might, your mileage might vary. Because um, it's a, there is a big difference between my Tajima and my Happies because my Happies do that. So it's just one thing you have to be aware of. But other than that, I think that's all I got. So, like, subscribe, notification bell if you haven't already on YouTube. Uh, check us out every Tuesday evening. Depending on what time zone you're in, we always have it posted, so it'll show your local time zone. Um, come check us out every Tuesday. We'll be back next Tuesday. Most likely, uh, we'll have another subject that we can show you in all three of the, of the softwares that we showcased today. And uh, also coming up, I know we have some ideas on some interviews that we'd like to, to do as well with some industry experts and people in the industry. Um, so we have some, some, more, some more interviews coming up this year. So stay tuned to 2023. It'll be hit. All right. Yes. So I guess with that, that is Matthew Enderley from Patch Phrase. We have Just Armenta from GA Digitizing Studios. And I'm Jeff Fuller from Fuller Embroidery Works. Uh, we'd like to thank you guys for hanging out with us, and we'll catch you next time. See ya.